Hi, I'm Deb and I created this expense tracker and this is a little tutorial on how to download it seamlessly and have it work for you. So this is my website. Um, all you got to do is go into the expense tracker page and then go to this link here. So download free expense tracker and form. So you click that and it'll bring you to this page here. And this is all on desktop. I'll do another tutorial for mobile as well. Um, so this is what it looks like when you haven't signed into your Gmail account or G Drive or whatever. Um, you have to have a Gmail account for this to work because these are Google Docs. So what you do is you sign in. So once that happens, then it'll look like this and you're in your drive. Um, so what you do from here is you grab your expense tracker and only the expense tracker. Don't try to download the form because it's there for the purposes of like putting them together, but you actually don't need to download both of them for it to work. So only download the expense tracker, click on it here, then go to the more actions menu, which is the three dots, and then make a copy. So it's gonna create a copy that will sit in your drive. It'll be called copy of expense tracker, and you can see it's like creating it right now. And you can edit this, it won't affect my template. You can't edit the template that I have public. Um, so right now it, will, it should sit in your drive. So if you go to your drive, then it will show up with these two things. And because you download the expense tracker, it automatically downloads a tracker form for you. And this is like your own one. You can edit it. It's not the one that you need access to. Um, so what you do is you double click on these and open these both up. So if we're looking at this first, I put these um, amounts in just for the purposes of like showing what the time, like what the tracker looks like and how it looks like with the graph. But obviously these aren't your real ones, they're just templates. So what you should do is you should delete them. So you just right click and then you go delete rows. And since those are gone, this is completely empty. Um, so what we should do to test to see that it's actually linked is for you to go into your <clears throat> go into your tracker form and then this is the file that you edit so you can change the title you can change the categories but if you actually want to submit anything then you've got to press the preview button up here and it opens a new window and this is actually where you import stuff you can click today's date and then put in like bought a jacket today for like seventy dollars. You put it under shopping, and then you press submit. And let's do like two more, just to show you. So today's date as well. And then mm, bought some cake, five dollars for the piece of cake, food and drink. And then another one. Maybe let's do it for the previous month, like so July. And bought new phone they're like a thousand dollars right <laughs> um so then this would be like shopping as well so then you press submit and those three will be logged into your expense tracker and they should already be linked so as you can see here they show up here and they get categorized already and then if you go to monthly expenses down here then you can actually see that they've shown up in their categories and the graphs have already kind of been generated. So that's how it works. And I think a lot of people have had issues with this data going over to this side. They say that they've inputted like all this data here, yet it doesn't show up. The thing that I would say is that you have to pay attention to the purchase date and the format that it's in. Because when you put this in, it says August 24th, 2020. But if you were to input it as 24th of August, so 20th of the 8th, 2020, then that doesn't read as a date. It reads as like just a regular random number. And so the jacket was $70 in August and now it's completely disappeared because it doesn't register the date. And the purchase date is super important to like how this how this sheet works because if you go to this month site, even though it just says January, February, March, April, what it says is like the 1st of January, 2020, 1st of February, 2020. And it's actually registered as a date. 
and that helps with the formula. It helps with sorting out the data. So if your stuff isn't transferring over to this side, look at the date and it might be just you flip the days wrong. So say if you, even if I change this over, so the 1000 is here, it exists here, but if I change it to, so seventh, swap those numbers around, then it disappears. So I think that's the reason why people haven't got their expenses carried over, but literally it's a normal fixed. Normally, if you're actually, I think the problem is really with iPhone and iOS, because if you're on Google Chrome, it comes up with this and you select it and it automatically formats it for you. But if you're in iPhone, then it'll actually, yeah, it'll actually like ask you to import it and you might just like do it the wrong way. And then because of that, that's what happens. So um, just check that. And that's, I think, the main problem. So that is actually how it works on desktop. And you shouldn't have an issue with this. Um, I think like for Safari as well, this shouldn't be an issue either. You really have to be signed into Google Chrome. You've got to just download the tracker and the form will happen automatically. So that's my tutorial. Hope that makes sense for everyone. <laughs>